Next up is Jeff Zira talking about evolution and happiness. Hi everyone, um, glad my mic is working. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm actually a grad student at, at MIT, and I'm, I'm actually a, an MBA student, but I'm not your, your typical MBA student. I'm actually very concerned about the topic of happiness. And um, you know, I, I think it's extremely important. I think it's something that's more important than a lot of things, uh, including things like making money, which is kind of heresy at business school. but. Um, in all seriousness, I, I've really started caring about the topic of happiness when I discovered that a lot of the things that I thought would really matter for, in making me happy actually didn't matter at all. And since then, um, I've really I've explored the topic with a passion, and I've been trying to figure out how I can find those, dou those uh, double rainbows. So. <laughs> Um, so, my, I've had this realization, and it, it all really starts with evolution. So, I think that, you know, everyone's fairly familiar with the, with the concept, and basically, you know, any organism, an organism that has genes that confer survival or reproductive benefits is going to most likely pass those genes on to the next generation. So, a sort of survival of the fittest. Um, the, so we as human beings have, have gone through this evolutionary process, this selective process, uh, f for millions of iterations. So almost any trait or behavior that, that you see today that's common to human beings is, is actually something that was absolutely critical for our survival, and particularly for, for the survival of our ancestors when they were evolving. So even things like friendship or fear or even the, the satisfaction that you derive from work, they all actually have very important um, implications for survival. And there's, there's something important to see there, though, that human beings are, are explicitly designed for survival by natural selection. They're not designed uh, for happiness. So I think that a lot of us feel that our, our goal in... Um, our goal in life it really comes down to being happy and having positive experiences. But evolution is really at odds with that. It's, uh, it's actually, not only is its goal explicitly for survival and not happiness, but it's actually trying to make sure that we don't find a lasting or permanent happiness. So that's, that's something really to, um, to be aware of. And in fact, if we were, it were easy to find uh, a permanent or lasting happiness, then you might walk around in the forest, uh, find a piece of fruit, and suddenly be like, oh, I'm perfectly happy. I don't need anything else for the rest of my life. I'm just so satisfied. And then you get eaten by a bear. So, <laughs> but the, 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 the real point here is, is that it's almost as though evolution is, is playing a big trick on us, where it's teasing us with the potential for happiness, but it, it never actually lets us have it permanently. It's always fleeting, it can't last, because that, that's a very important for our survival function. So some very clever people actually figured out a way around this. They figured out a way around uh, this trap that evolution has set for us, and they, they used some rather twisted logic to do it. So instead of following you know, what, what we feel is natural, instead of following our instincts, and uh, which are really defined by evolution. Instead of following our instincts, they went against them, and they actually transformed their, the way that their minds work through meditation. So I'm very interested in meditation, and I've been doing it for a few years, and it's actually a fairly simple concept. So how does meditation you know, translate to happiness? How does that work? Well, it's, a, it's fairly simple. Basically, the first step is just kind of to calm your mind and to calm all of the thoughts that are constantly running around in our head. And at some point, you're able to actually observe the process of your own thoughts. You can see your thoughts. You can see your emotions, your feelings as they come up. So, you know, maybe you, you, you got a parking ticket and that makes you really angry. So as that anger arises, you actually just observe the anger. That's the next part, is that you're just observing, just watching. And the real magic in that is that as you observe it, it actually starts to fade away, and eventually it disappears. And when the anger comes up again, you just repeat the process. And it's, it's fairly simple, but through this process, you can, actually, you can actually reduce the strength of anger, and you can reduce the occurrence of it. 
And it's the same is true for all the other negative emotions, you know, fear, uh, anxiety, um, jealousy, all those things. You can, you can reduce the strength, and at the same time, you can increase the strength of very positive emotions, things like the love that Nathan mentioned, or um, you know, compassion for other people, or even a joy that's, that's independent of, of any sort of outside circumstances, a joy of life. And by doing that, uh, you're really developing happiness uh, through meditation. So the reason that I really like to talk about this, this topic is that I feel that it's been extremely useful for me. Uh, I feel that I've transformed myself. Uh, about six months before I started business school, I, uh, my mom got cancer. And at first we didn't think it was a big deal because my mom was probably one of the healthiest people I knew. She never got a cold. Um, but a, a couple of months into it, we realized that this was serious, that um, it, it was not looking so good. And everyone in my, in my, my family was devastated. You know, we were, the, the mood at the house was very dark, very gloomy, uh, except for me. And that was because I had, I had really worked hard at this meditation thing and trying to be more positive. So I was trying to, to bring out all the positive aspects. I talked to her a lot and, you know, I tried to remind her of all the happy things, of all the, the wonderful things that were going on with her life, all the things that she should still be happy for while she was still with us. And while it was a very difficult time, you know, I worked with her a lot. And one time, you know, and I'll never forget this, but one time after, after sitting with her for a long time, um, she looked at me with, with tears in her eyes and she said, I'm so glad I had you as a son. And the point here is not, is not that I'm special. I'm not, you know, I'm not a hero. I wasn't, I wasn't even born this way. You know, the point is that I changed myself, is that I changed the way that I experience tragedy. I changed, I changed my happiness. I was able to develop it. And I think that that's what's, what's really most, most interesting about this whole thing, is that change is possible. And that's what's, what's most encouraging and, and most powerful to me about happiness and developing happiness. That the things that are, are so, things like compassion and uh, developing altruistic love, those are the things that are actually most beneficial to developing a real lasting happiness. And that developing your own personal happiness is actually something that, that is, it's one of the best ways to help other people become happy. And for that reason, I really think that developing, developing your happiness is one of the best things that you can do for the world. So may you find your true happiness.